Hi, my name is Connor. I am a second year DO student here at Des Moines University, and I'm also the president of the Emergency Medicine Interest Group. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about a really simple but important topic, and that topic is going to be when should you go to the ER? And I'm sorry that we couldn't do this in person, but I'm really happy to be a part of it. So uh, thanks for coming and listening to me talk about this. So let's get started with a couple of interesting stats here. And I just kind of wanted to highlight the use of the ER in the United States. So 130 million visits to the ER occur yearly. And to put that in perspective, there's about 320 million people in the United States. So uh, a one third of, of that number um, is, is how many visits happen yearly. Now that's not, multiple visits can happen by one person, but still it's a really interesting statistic. Um, another statistic is that 60 out of every 100 people over the age of 75 visit the ER yearly. So the ER is there. It's a great resource uh, to utilize if you need it. And it's always better to be cautious if you are having issues that you feel like they need to be addressed. So just kind of want to use that to highlight this a little bit. So the main point of this presentation is basically if you're having any symptoms, um, it's always best to get help, to talk to someone. And that might be your primary care physician. That might be through calling 911. That might be go through going to the ER. Um, but it's always best to talk to someone, talk to a medical pro professional and, uh, you know, get their input and expertise about what's happening. So here is a uh, list of common symptoms that might lead to an ER visit. And it's in no way meant to be complete. I think that could be 40 slides long if I tried to address every um, symptom that could lead to an ER visit. But if, if the general idea is if you're having anything that's really concerning, it's always best to go to the ER or to seek help in any way. But let's go over a couple of these symptoms here. So um, chest pain or discomfort or any pain that radiates to the arm or jaw as well um, is concerning. Uh, difficulty breathing or choking, an injury or fall, which includes uh, burns, bleeding, broken bones, and things like that. Um, and it's really up to your discretion if you want to utilize the ER or your primary care or an urgent care facility for this. But if it's concerning you or, you know, seems like a, a large injury, always utilize the ER for something like this. Um, seizure, passing out, any sudden or unusually painful headache, um, any signs of stroke, and we'll go over that in the next slide. Uh, weakness, dizziness, confusion, blood with cough, throwing up or in stool. Um, again, use your discretion for things like this. High fever, especially if that fever is not improving with any medication use is important too. Um, vomiting, diarrhea that's severe or it's not improving. Um, and then suicidal thoughts or poisoning or overdose of alcohol or drugs. All of those things are really important to go and seek help if you're experiencing that. Or if you know someone, a friend, family member that's having, uh, that's experiencing those symptoms as well. Uh, so I think this is a really important thing for anyone to know um, for your sake and for, uh, you know, uh, like I said, friends, family members to know these things as well. So this, uh, three major signs of stroke can be uh, detailed with this fast mnemonic. So F for facial drooping, A for arm weakness, and then S for speech problems. And then the whole thing is uh, act fast, um, time to call 911 with the T. So uh, if you're having any of those three symptoms or if you have a friend or family member that you are with that's experiencing those symptoms, it's always best to seek help. So here's the slide with just some general tips. Um, again, when to call 911, if you have anything that's really concerning um, or if you have concerning symptoms and you really have no way of getting to, um, getting to the ER, uh, to you know, utilize 911, they're there for a reason. Um, you know, we want you to get help. We want you to be cautious, things like that. For uh, some other tips of, it's, it's good to have these phone numbers easily accessible that if you need them, you can, you can try and call and get some advice. Um, and that's going to be like a, fa a family or close friend, especially if they can help you with transportation or uh, be there if you're, you know, if it's concerning. But again, utilize 911 if you need it. Um, your primary care provider, again, if you had uh, any concerns that weren't really, um, weren't very severe or, or anything like that, that you wanted to just give them a quick call, it's really good to know those things. Good to have a medical professional on board with your treatment and they'll kind of guide you along with it. Um, some insurances offer something like a hotline or a nurse uh, phone number that you can call and they will give you some advice. Uh, and it's really depends on what, what insurance you have and if they offer it, but it's something to look into if, that, if, if you'd like to. 
Uh, another uh, another good thing to have is have these items kind of written down um, and easily accessible by you and maybe a family member too. Maybe have uh, any family members that you're really close with. Uh, they could kind of they could have these things easily accessible as well. And some apps do things like this too. So uh, there's all there's multiple options, but a medication list, an allergy list, and then kind of also location of your closest emergency department is important for you as if if you were in an your own situation, but if you were with a friend or family member that needed help as well, that's good to know. So in conclusion, if you're concerned, it's always best to get help. I can't say this enough. I, we want you to be cautious, so uh, use your discretion, but if you are having concerning symptoms, it's always, look in, looking, it's always good to look into options for getting help. And this is the last page with just some references for um, information I use on the slide, but thank you so much for listening to me and I hope this presentation was somewhat helpful and answered some of your questions, but um, thank you and have a great rest of your day. At Des Moines University's Family Medicine Clinic, our goal is to provide you with compassionate care that is comprehensive. From caring from children to the elderly, our medical team provides holistic preventative guidance on how you and your family can maintain a healthy lifestyle and manage any symptoms that may arise so that you can be at your best. During the current COVID-19 pandemic, maintaining your health as well as a safe lifestyle has never been more important. Our providers are here to help when acute conditions affect you or your family. We treat musculoskeletal injuries, infections, illnesses, and many other medical conditions. As an academic medical center, DMU is training tomorrow's healthcare providers on how to provide expert care to people from all backgrounds. We invite you to visit the Family Medicine Clinic at Des Moines University. We offer the care and attention you deserve. Thank you.